associate the Holy Spirit with the wildness and unpredictability of wind. May the breath of the Spirit bring us energy and creativity as we continue on our Advent journey, our journey to Bethlehem. Let us pray. Spirit of God, energy of life, hear our prayer as we continue our Advent journey together. Whether you lead us, whether you need us, give us the faith to trust your guidance, as Mary did, as Joseph did, and the wise ones did. Amen. And now, verse 2 of the candle is burning. Love needs a path. 
Peace needs a highway. Even as we wait, let us make a way for God in our hearts and in our world. Let us worship God. And we will worship God in our first hymn. And if you have a Voices United hymn book at home, it's number, um, it's actually number five, All the Earth is Waiting. And it's also on the song sheets that uh, I email to you. <laughs> Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald the good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. And that is how it is written. Santa Claus is coming to town. It's not only a song, it is a big announcement. A big announcement in the Christmas season. And this announcement brings joy to many, and many join in singing the song. No matter what age you are, when those words of the song is heard, it brings hope, joy, peace, and love to so many. Like the song, our scripture from Isaiah is a big announcement. Our scripture today is from the beginning of what commentators call Second Isaiah. This scripture is the transition point between 1st and 2nd Isaiah. Historically, this announcement came to the people of Israel 150 years into their captivity in Babylon. After 150 years in captivity, the people had little hope of returning to the promised land. Many mourned the loss of the ancestral land, and many thought that God was not with them in their misery. And if you ever want to go into detail of the misery of the people during that time, read the book of Lamentations. In Lamentations, the writer laments at the pain and suffering of the people in captivity. When looking at pain and suffering, another Bible text comes to mind. The book of Exodus, where the people of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt. In both these books, Lamentations and Exodus, the cries of the people were expressed. Many of the people who were in captivity thought they and their ancestors were to blame for the misery and pain that they were feeling. They believed that this time of captivity was punishment for the sins of the past. Many thought that God was angry and that God left the people to suffer. But this big announcement gave people hope. This well-known scripture starts with the line, Comfort, O comfort my people. It says that God uttered these words to the prophet. And in the next line is God's instructions to Isaiah, saying, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, and that her penalty is paid that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. 
this, these were the instructions to Isaiah. The instructions for Isaiah to make the big announcement. The announcements would be big news, and commentators state that the historical context of this big news was when those that had taken the people captive were defeated in battle. And the new regime coming in permitted the people to return to their ancestral lands. What this big announcement was doing in this context was preparing the people for the return to the promised land. This return was historically known as the second exodus. It was giving the people a heads up to prepare for the coming of the Lord who would lead them back to the land that was promised in the covenant made to Abraham. For most of the captives at that time, they had never been to the promised land and a journey that they were going on was them going to a new land and it would have been scary for that journey. God in this big announcement in a lifted voice of Jerusalem tells the people, do not fear. God asked this voice to declare to the cities of Judah, here is your God. For many during that time, the image of God was a God who punished those who sinned. But the prophet in this big announcement is not coming to punish the God in this announcement is coming to save. And the big announcement is that God is coming with power, but that God is also caring and kind. In verse 11 it says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. This big announcement brings comfort as God is coming like a shepherd to gently lead the flock to safety to the promised land. This big announcement that the geography of the wilderness be made level also indicates that the journey back to Jerusalem will be much smoother than the journey made by those who were captive in Egypt. This big announcement in Isaiah also gave the people of Israel hope. It gave them hope when they faced Roman occupation. The people of Israel looked to this big announcement in hope for the coming of God. The people of Israel cried to God for help because of the violence that the Roman Empire brought to their land. They were longing for a God that would save them from the empire. They were looking for God in the form of a shepherd. They were hoping for God to come to them as a shepherd and save them. In that time, God came to them as a shepherd. He came to them as a descendant of David, the shepherd king of Israel. God the shepherd came to them in Jesus who like a shepherd put his life at risk to save the flock. The big announcement of the coming of God in Jesus by John the Baptist gave many people hope, especially those who were on the margins of society. It was through Jesus that those who had sinned, those who were outcasts, and those who were poor felt God's love and God's grace. It is through coming, God coming as a shepherd in Jesus that God picked up the flock and carried them in his bosom and led them to the path of eternal life through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Through Jesus, God was present to the people and he carried them home. When Jesus left, he made a big announcement. He promised to say, send an advocate to lead the people and comfort the people. 
This promise was fulfilled in the Holy Spirit, which is present in each one of us. Like the people who first heard the words, Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, we are in a period of captivity. In this pandemic, we are being held captive from the way of life that we've been accustomed to. Many of us live in fear of more lockdown measures being forced upon us. Many of us are feeling discouraged that we cannot celebrate Christmas with large family gatherings. Many of us have lost our inner peace as our minds live in fear of what this disease can do. Many have lost a sense of inner peace as they face financial difficulties. Many business owners' minds are not at peace as they live in fear that their business will not survive the pandemic. In addition to the pandemic, many are not at peace as they are mourning the loss of loved ones. At this time in which many look forward to with joy, many are living in fear as we see the number of COVID-19 cases on the rise. There are many who are in this world who are suffering and like the people who were in exile, they feel as though the sins they have done in the past are to blame. It is to all these people, all of us that are worried that, that we hear this big announcement. We hear this announcement that God is coming to comfort us and that God is coming to us as a shepherd to lead us home, to lead us to a better place to lead us to a better situation. In this unusual year, we, like the people in captivity, long for God's comfort and God's coming. We long for the big announcement that we can return to the way things were. In this big announcement, we are promised that God is coming again. God will come again in Jesus, and God is coming in those who have been called to lead us through this extraordinary time. God is coming to us through scientists. God is coming through essential workers, and God is coming to those in need through each one of us. On TV, I've seen a few commercials that gives us hope and gives us peace. In both of these commercials, it shows us a time in which we will be out of captivity. It shows families and friends gathering again. Like the song, Santa Claus is coming to town, we are hearing a big announcement that we will soon gather again. We've gotten a hint of the announcement of a vaccine. There will be a big announcement when it is approved in Canada, and many will begin to feel at ease. As we hear this big announcement in Isaiah, we are called to share aloud the good news it brings. We are called to share the good news that God is coming again in Jesus and is coming in the Holy Spirit. We are called to be heralds of this big announcement to those in despair. Christ is coming to bring us hope, peace, joy, and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. And speaking of that saying, O comfort, comfort now my people, is our hymn, O comfort, comfort now my people, which is 883 in Voices United or it will actually also be in the song sheet.
Today, we are not passing the offering plate. The plate is on the uh, desk at the back, and you can leave your offerings there on your way out. And many of your offerings have already been received through PAR, which is pre-authorized remittance, or by checks mailed in and dropped off to the treasury. Thank you for continuing to support the church during this unprecedented time. And I encourage you to continue supporting your local church in God's mission in your community and in the wider world through the Mission and Service Fund. Let us take a moment now to bless all our offerings. When I was but a youngster, Christmas meant one thing, that I'd be getting lots of toys that day. I learned a lot of different when Father sat me down and taught me to spell Christmas this way.
all he stands for has been shepherd's cave. And that's why there's a chorus church. Um, we have uh, uh, just a reminder that Sunday, December 20th is Advent 4 and there is Holy Communion. And some, on Thursday, December 24th is our Christmas Eve service at 7 o'clock St. Andrews. And there will be a pre-recorded pageant, uh, so there isn't that many people on stage being safe. And we're looking for a few more actors. If you're interested, please contact me. And there will be no church on December 27th, but we'll be back on January 3rd for the new year for the Epiphany service and Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. And now, share the minute for mission. Our minute for mission this morning is entitled Leading the Way. Mission and service funding global partner, the World Student Christian Federation, Africa Region, gives university students a place to come together in education, faith, and activism. WSCF Africa empowers and connects responsible young leaders around the world on their path to change tomorrow. It encourages a culture of democracy to mobilize youth to become proactive in society, promoting positive change through dialogue and action between different traditions and cultures. At a gathering, one of the World Student Christian Federation members shared these following words. As young people, we ask the churches not to spread hate, speech, or judgment, but to preach love, peace, and acceptance for all people as God's creation. We ask our churches to take part in interfaith dialogue, to start building relationships with members of other faiths, so that we may come to understand their beliefs and accept them as brothers and sisters. We ask our churches to acknowledge that we cannot master the truth. We can only approach the truth. Only God holds the truth. As the present youth, we are the church of the future. Because of this, it is important for the, ch for the churches to communicate with us and to ensure that our opinions are heard. It is part of the role of churches to promote human dignity and to serve the common good. We are thankful that Mission and Service is in partnership with the World Student Christian Federation and its vision of changing the world for the better. If Mission and Service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, Please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. And now let us take a moment for prayer. Let us pray. 
God of peace. We give you thanks for your presence in the times when your people were oppressed. We give you thanks that even in difficult times, you have made your presence known. We give you thanks for the times that your light and love has shone on us. We give you thanks for your presence in your Son, Jesus. We give you thanks that your presence gives us peace when our minds are divided. We give you thanks that you call us to be one. On this day of remembrance for violence against women, we pray for all women who have experienced violence. We pray for the families and friends of women who have lost their lives to violence. And we pray that there will be a time in which the violence will stop. We pray for all those who have been victims of violence that they may feel your comfort and love. We pray that your peace and love shine in all places. We pray for those who are angry that your love and presence will bring peace to their minds. We pray for those who are feeling lonely during this Christmas season, that your love and your peace and your presence be felt by them. We pray for those that are mourning the loss of loved ones, whether it was um, recently or if it is someone always in their heart. May they feel your presence in your love. We pray for those in poverty, that not only will they be fed, but they will that they may be lifted up out of their difficult situation. We pray for all those who are standing up for the rights of people that cannot speak for themselves. May their efforts bring peace to all. We also pray for those who are working the front lines of this pandemic. We pray that you be with them during this difficult task. We pray that our recent surge of COVID-19 cases level off so that we may all be safe. And now we pray silently those persons of concerns we would like to declare to you. We gather all these prayers into one as we pray the prayer of your Son, the Prince of Peace, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Now we do have one final hymn, and it's on the uh, page two of the uh, song sheet, or it's Voices United 44, if you have Voices United at home. And it's, it came upon the midnight clear.
sharing that song may God bless you and keep you may God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you may God look upon you with kindness and give you peace Amen. <laughs> 